Our story begins in Lee's apartment. We see the bushwhackers seated around the dining room table with Lee standing up. Gentlemen, welcome to the first board meeting of the Bushwhackers Limited Liability Corporation. Present are CEO and CFO Lee Suchek here. Luca and JJ roll their eyes. Head of Market Research Luca Suwon and Human Resources and Payroll Director John Armstrong Jr. Why are we doing this? Dude, just roll with it. He's in supervisor mode. You don't want to interrupt him when he's like that. Trust me. Gentlemen, in the six and a half weeks we've been in operations, we've netted only $436.18. The works we've done has varied, and I believe this may be the reason why our profit margins are so dismal. Well... We did take on creatures of literally titanic proportions. Y yes, and that's another matter. It appears that our work has involved characters of an unusual nature. So, freaks, basically. Look, as head of market research, what would be the best solution to not only combat the this deficit and attract new clientele? Uh. We need to change tact, focus on a particular specialty, and then target a specific sector of the market to differentiate us from what others do in the field. And? And not to focus on outlandish services such as private investigation or mercenary work. Thank you. And now, the head of human resources. What? What is your input? On what? Uh, on how we can maximize profits? That, I don't know, what Lucas said? JJ, I'm starting to think you aren't taking this seriously. I don't. This entire meeting is just a joke. Dude, just go with it. I mean, he's not asking you to watch a three-hour movie or whatever. Why can't we just diversify our services? I'll bring in more people interested in our services and our company. Because it doesn't work that way. Luca, you're head of marketing research. You tell him that. Um, okay. It doesn't work that way. Really? Thanks. Guys, if this business venture ha is to continue, we need to generate revenue. And fast. Why fast? <laughs> oh... Well, he got into a tiff the other day, and he got all road ragey, and now he's being taken to court. That's not the reason why. No, but it's a big reason. Seriously, what can we do to earn more profits this quarter? Hmm. We can go public. We're not turn turning a profit, jackass. How the hell are we going, going to go public? And we're not even offering any stock options. Oh, that's a deal breaker. The company I work at is offering stock options. Well, whoop de f and do. So, Trey, why don't we just get some cash infusion? Isn't your Aunt Janice loaded from that inheritance? Janice is under conservatorship after she mistakenly bought a penthouse in Manhattan. And it's a long legal battle to undo that deal, and the lawyers we hired. Well, they don't really have the highest ratings. Oh. Damn it. So, what are we going to do? Ideas? Anyone? Remember, there are no bad ones. Well, I've got one. But in your case, I'll make an exception. Well, we did get a response to our ad on social media, and they're willing to pay us two grand. Oh, snap. What's the job? 
It cuts to a truck with waste material cluttered on the truck bed and all around. Are you freaking serious? Well, they only responded like 10 hours ago. We have to transport and dump this waste for a developer. I mean, it, at least it's only one truck. JJ points to the three other trucks uh, stocked with waste barrels. <sighs> Bugger. Alright, well, now that we're doing this, where do we need to take it? Um, says we're supposed to drive 10 miles out to the nearby waste disposal facility. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 10 miles to the facility? Yeah. Oh my god. So, so that's 20 miles total going back and forth. Well, what else can we do? I'll tell you this. My Uncle Fred told me how the rivers in New York City are so polluted that if you went into them, you'd emerge with like six different types of cancer. Get out of here. Okay, well, that part I may have exaggerated, but it is really, really sick. So, you want to transport this waste to a nearby river and dump them in there? Your words. Luca looks at the map. Well, he may not be too far off. There's an abandoned pond just a few blocks away. And the energy company is still fighting the state over the whole coal ash dump. Right, so what's one more? Now you're getting it. As Lee walks off, JJ looks at Luca. You cannot be behind this, can you? Mate... I'm genuinely shocked that this idea didn't come from me. Me! Of all people! It cuts to the abandoned pond where Lee's on the walkie-talkie as JJ backs the truck to the shoreline. You're alright. You're alright. You're alright. You're alright. Stop! That's... good. Hey, Suchek, do you think this is a good idea? What? Of course it is. We're not wasting fuel transporting the shit for 10 miles and not polluting the air. Plus, from the looks of this place, it's not like anyone's been here for decades. And by the time this place does get developed and this shit does hit the fan, we'll either have moved away or be dead. Oh, okay. I see. Plus, you remember in science class how they always said the government buries nuclear waste out in the desert? Well, this is... Pretty close to being a desert out here. Yeah, but we haven't got a concrete bunker to store all this. Details, details. Alright, JJ, unload it. The bed tilts forward and we see the barrels topple into the pond. A few sink to the bottom, but the rest just sit there. Huh. Guess the pond was a lot smaller than we thought. It has been bone dry for the past few weeks thanks to the drought. Jojo walks over and looks at the pond before turning to the other two. I can see the barrels. Yeah, JJ. We can all see the barrels. Hey! The other side of the pond looks pretty deep. Really? How can you tell? Lee hurls a stone and it drops. Satisfied? Barely. Good. Just three more trips, right? As they leave, we see the waste product slowly ooze forward. We see someone walk over to the dock. Woo! What a fine day to be out for a swim. He then jumps into the water as the waste water slowly pools under the dock. A few hours later, the bushwhackers have completed the last of their waste product dump. As they roll the last of the barrels into the pond, they watch it sink. See? Told you it was deep. I think that's 10, 12, maybe 14 feet deep. I never would have guessed. There's a pinging noise. JJ looks at his phone. Did the money hit our account? Yep, yep. Gents, we are in business. You know, we ought to try the new Korean restaurant. I heard I got great reviews on Yelp. I can go for some Korean food. Me too. So long as there, there isn't a tank with a 
live octopus in it. As they get into the truck and drive off, we see a figure emerge from the water, its eyes glowing red. It snarls and then lumbers towards the shoreline. A few hours later at the Korean restaurant, the terrible trio stumble onto the parking lot, laughing. We see the same figure lurking behind a tree, watching them. It leaves behind claw marks as it stalks towards the bushwhackers. So, just to get this straight, you said you'd eat a tire for 40 bucks. Well, not an entire tire, just a small slice, like, yay big. Think of those beef jerkies you sold in jars at the drugstore way back in the day. And I said 400. Damn. How much have you had to drink? As the other two stumble away, Lee tries to fumble with his keys when he hears a snarl. He turns around and screams as a hand reaches out for him. A few days later, Luca and JJ are walking in an abandoned lot. Why did Lee text us to meet him here? Uh, maybe there's another gig? Really? In an empty lot? What are we doing exactly? Digging for oil? Well, you never know. They hear a ping. Meet me down by the creek. We have to clear some debris. He's playing it pretty close to the chest, isn't he? Oh, that's Suchek for you in a nutshell. Come on. As they scramble down the embankment, they pick through the bramble rocks and debris. Suddenly there's a snarl and JJ yelps before vanishing. Luca turns around to see JJ has vanished. Really? Oh, God, now is not the time for hide and seek. He turns around to see a giant, gaunt figure with wrinkly skin and multicolored eyes. It snarls as it holds JJ with one arm. My, you're a big boy. The creature snarls and tries to swipe at him, but he ducks. He grabs a cinder block and hurls it at the creature's head, dropping JJ. The two scramble up the embankment as the creature again snarls and climbs on all fours. The two proceed to pelt it with debris when the creature stands up, dwarfing the two. Hey, JJ? Yeah? How's about we split? You go left and I'll go right? Somehow, I don't think that's gonna do anything. What? Pessimist? Enough! The two look shocked. Oh! You speak English. What did you think he'd speak, Russian? Well, maybe, you never know. The creature hunches down, looking at them. You are the ones who dumped the waste in the pond the other day. Luca and JJ exchange nervous looks. Weren't you? God, yes! Yes, it was us! Way to be cool, JJ. I happened to be swimming in the pond when you dumped the waste material into it. When I emerged, I was transformed. No longer the man I was. I sought vengeance for what you dolts did. What the hell was in that wastewater? Well, n never mind that. He called us dolts. Who says that anymore? The creature snarls and raises its claws. The two get out of the way as it chases him across the lot. Lucas slides down the embankment and runs into a sewer opening where he sees Lee lying there. He goes over and prods him with his foot. Oi, Suchek! Wakey, wakey! Lee doesn't move. Luca finds a rusty rebar and climbs back up the embankment to see JJ cornered. He uses a cinder block as an improvised shield as the creature tries to get to him. Luca manages to sneak behind the creature, but he senses his presence. He lunges at him, knocking him down. As he's about to bite, Luca plunges the rebar up its jaw. The creature stops, snarling again, and keels over as Luca scurries away. JJ walks over to see it groaning in pain. Ah. 
Wow. I kind of feel sorry for the guy, you know? He somehow can't help but feel a bit responsible. A bit. We were entirely responsible for creating and then killing it. Well, maybe the killing part. A bright green substance oozes out of the creature, which then proceeds to burn on the pavement. They hear a noise and turn to see Suchak covered in excrement. He looks around and flicks the muck away. Ugh, what the hell happened? <laughs> Why did I wake up in a sewer? Um, I think you got drunk, stumbled around, and fell asleep in the closest shelter you could find. JJ, I can see the monster right behind you. I'm assuming that thing had something to do with me w waking up in shit. Uh, yes? God. I really hope this doesn't become a common occurrence. Later that evening, a van pulls up and we see several figures get out and grab the dead creature and carry it away. They deposit its carcass into the back and drive off. 